Okay guys, so before we get into the unboxing of the uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate uh, Limited Edition, I first wanted to talk to you about the movie at hand, if that being um, none other than Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Man, this film impressed me. And that's very hard for films to do these days. Not many films this year have impressed me, uh, at least not as much as this film had. Going into it, I was kind of excited. It's my kind of film, you know, a Spider-Man film and everything. I love Spider-Man. I love the fact that this film is taking a look at Miles Morales instead of Peter Parker and everything. That element I was definitely looking forward to and very hyped up for it. But it turns out that this film subverted my expectations in the greatest way, not because the story didn't go as I ex expected it to, but purely because the overall quality of the film was so much more better than I could see coming. This film is incredible i really want this film to win an oscar it deserves an oscar and that's just how good it is in the realm of animation because its style is so distinctive it looks and feels just like a comic book and the animation just for a film like this really really works it's very well animated very good to look at and so above all its style is very awesome great job on the animation work and as we said about the characters the fact that this focus on miles morales is a good fresh take on the Spider-Man based stuff but we also got several other Spider-Man characters which I was kind of afraid that with them being six of them that they wouldn't be too fleshed out or wouldn't have that uh, that much of an arc I was completely wrong all six of these characters are fleshed out fun to watch and very very compelling emotionally as well I got so invested in the story that I was crying I was laughing it's very heartfelt and gripping this movie so above all, what can I say? I just love the characters, I adore the story, and yeah, it has some great animation. This is easily a 9, 9.5 out of 10 film. The only thing that bogs it down, I suppose, is Kingpin, but that's because they did, wanted to take their focus away from the main villain so they could focus on the Spider-Men instead, well, Spider-Men and women, and I feel like that paid off the most because the Spider-People are the people who you are most invested in in the story. So yes, Kingpin could have done with a little bit more um, development, but apart from that, he's still a good villain. He has good motivations and stuff. And he is threatening above all else. Very threatening villain. So he does everything a villain needs to do. We just really needed more of him. And that's the only flaw I have with this entire film. Great film, this one. I'd highly recommend going to see it in cinemas. Because it's one of those films which you're going to have the best time watching it in cinemas. Okay then, guys. So... What you just saw there was none other than my initial reaction to this film and all what I can say is that a lot of that initial reaction does still stand. But regardless, you guys know that wondering how come there's some uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate gameplay in the background. Well, that's because this current Marvelous Monday review is part of Smashmas. So, what that means is that to keep with the theme of Smashmas, I uh, have some uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate gameplay and everything. But either way, um, another thing is that, of course, you had the hunting video yesterday that was also part of um, Marvelous Mondays, but unfortunately it wasn't uploaded on a Monday because I had to upload it a day early to keep with the 12 days of Smashmas and everything. But enough about Smashmas and stuff, that's not the film at hand. The film at hand is, of course, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, as you can see from the images, because I am going to constantly be putting in some images uh, right here. Just to uh, to remind you guys of what review you're watching and everything. But enough of that. That has been said and done. So we're going to move on in first and foremost to the story right here. So basically this film has a fairly simplistic story in, on paper. So all that happens is that um, Kingpin creates a collider that um, allows many different Spider-Man from many different universes to, to team up into the universe that Kingpin is currently um, a part of alongside Miles Morales. And so this collider will uh, destroy all of the universes is if each of the Spider-Men from each of their respective universes don't team up to take down Kingpin and his collider and everything. So yeah, it might seem like a pretty basic uh, story on paper, and that's because it is. It's more of an origin story for Miles Morales more than anything. But what really drives this um, story forward more than anything, I'd say, is the uh, characters. So basically, this, char uh, this film does have... A large quantity of characters, both villains and heroes alike, and I've got to say, 
Um, not only is the story itself very well executed, another thing about the story is that it's very, very fast paced. The action is always moving forward and so the story never gets boring. There is never a dull moment in this film. It just keeps on going. It kicks itself into high gear at the beginning and never stops. I don't get bored watching this film at any point moment whatsoever so above the pace and it's also for great characters so it's not enough with miles morales himself he has so much depth in this uh, film and he has such a great arc it makes him such a compelling character and above all he is just so relatable he's probably the most relatable spider-man we've had yet besides uh the newest peter parker from homecoming and so above all it just makes for a really fun character that you can uh relate to and that makes him for more compelling for it and then on top of that there's also his great arc and everything because his arc centralizes around the central theme of the film which is of course choice because um many of the spider-man uh, spider people even choose to be spider-man that's their choice and that's the whole um idea behind the theme of things choosing to be spider-man even miles chooses to have one shoelace untied which allows for some very uh, comedic moments we'll get into the humor later on though uh, so yeah, with the central um, theme being of choice, basically Miles starts off the film thinking that he has very little choice over what he does in life, so he has very little choice in his schooling, and he has very little choice in being Spider-Man because he feels like he must be Spider-Man, he's made a promise, he must be Spider-Man, he has no choice in the honour, in fact that's the last thing Spider-Man ever said to him, the fact that he had no choice on whether he wanted to be Spider-Man or not. So Miles feeling that he had his choice taken away from him, of course, didn't make for very good Spider-Man. However, with a nice little conversation from his dad putting him in the right way, he of course learns that Spider-Man is a choice, so he then chooses to be Spider-Man, and that's when he is Spider-Man, when he chooses to do so. So above all, like I said, great arc, really fits in with the central theme of the film. And uh, then there's also the other characters, uh, including Peter Parker, Quinn, uh, Gwen Stacy, even Penny Parker, Spider-Noir, and uh, Spider-Ham. But basically, um... Spider-Ham is a great comic relief. He really does steal scenes um, that he's in because he's a cartoon. He's made to be funny and he's very well uh, executed in that um, comedic role and everything. And then there's also Spider-Noir who's also a very, very fun character. He has a lot of great lines and a lot of awesome humour to him. But um, apart from those, there is, of course, as I said before, Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy. All five of those have great chemistry with one another. Watching all of these characters... Uh, interact and be with one another it's just so much fun to watch above all they're great characters by themselves but when they're sharing the scenes together that's when these characters are at their best now you guys might notice that i missed out penny parker penny parker does have a much more of a smaller role in this film she basically serves as the intelligence behind the team and really to me that feels like that's about all what she achieves in this film she does however have some of the most emotion to her because um spoiler alert from here on out of course her little spider bot is destroyed and so that does create a lot of emotion behind the story you could say so well she does have her emotional moments to her she's just not as compelling or as fun of a character as the other five are so i suppose she is the weakest character here but even then she has still awesome establishment and development throughout all of the characters are very well established because this film is montage based whenever it introduces a new character which is very well executed normally films like this wouldn't work like it's very uh, suicide squad style but because it's very fast paced and it keeps the pace moving forward then it's not suicide squad style it works here unlike it did in that previously uh, mentioned movie so above all what i'm saying here is that this film takes great and i mean great direction it's very well directed uh, film as is it with editing as well it's very well edited it has some great editing techniques right here again i can't mention this enough but it really does keep the pace moving forward but anyway uh, besides for excellent pacing and excellent editing as well as for great characters there is also uh, the villain characters which i should mention about as well of course so all of the villain characters besides prowler and kingpin have no development or depth to them whatsoever and the only reason that prowler has uh, some awesome character and development to him is because of course his secret identity is uncle aaron of uh, miles morales but even then, like, that serves as the main emotional drive of the film, and it's really what solidifies the end of Miles' arc in this particular film. So that's what makes that such a impactful villain. And then there's also Kingpin, which I do indeed enjoy this villain. He has some great motivation behind him with the fact that, you know, this is for his family. He just wants to see his family back, and he's willing to do whatever it takes to do so. But because Kingpin kills Spider-Man at the beginning of the film, or at least for Peter Parker from Miles Morales' um, dimension, mind you... 
Because of that, it really does make Kingpin feel threatening throughout. Uh, same with Liv Octavia, actually. She is a very compelling, uh, not very compelling, very threatening villain. So we always fear for our heroes' life, espe uh, lives, especially since, you know, this film sets them up so well that we're made to care for them, really. So above all, the, uh, the characters have some great emotional drive to them, and uh, they do help keep uh, the pace moving forward, as does the editing and direction of the film. So, last but not least, I suppose there is, of course, the action and animation. So, the action in this film, it is fantastic. It's very well choreographed here, and the editing does really help it make, uh, make it feel fluent and fast-paced, because, of course, there's a lot of matches to action, which make it very easy to uh, watch along. And above all, the action has a lot, and I mean a lot of emotion to it, because, as I said before, we care about uh, these characters and what happens to them. And then we also... Uh, care for the villains somewhat, especially for Prowler, like whenever we see um, Prowler fighting off against Miles Morales, it's just so tension building knowing that Prowler is of course um, Miles' uncle, but Prowler doesn't know that Miles is the one behind the mask right now, and that does really create some tension through the dramatic irony you could say. So yes, action is very fun to watch and just also very uh, has a lot of emotion behind it, mind you. But apart from the action, there is also, of course, the animation. And the animation in this film is so good. I love the animation here. So, I watched the film originally, and then I watched it again. And again in 3D, so I know basically what I'm talking about since I've seen the film three times, as I said before, twice in 2D and once in 3D. So basically the 3D adds a lot to this film. The 3D is very, very good here, mostly because it really does match the animation style, because the animation style is rather realistic, because we have like fades and blurs and stuff, and that really does make the animation feel more compelling. It really hooks you into the action a whole lot more because of the realism behind it. So above all, it's just very well animated, easily one of the best looking films this year, besides Incredibles 2, I would say, when it comes to the animation department. So it just looks great. It has a lot of emotion behind it, and this film, as I said before, it's just fast-paced. And above all, it's just so rewatchable. I can see myself enjoying this film for years and years to come. This is a great film, and I'm very happy to be reporting that we finally have a Spider-Man film that is this great. Don't get me wrong, I love Homecoming, but Homecoming has a great many issues, which we'll discuss, of course, in later um, Marvelous Mondays videos. Uh, and that's why I think that this is actually the best Spider-Man film you can get. Even better than the original Sam Raimi trilogy, or at least of what I remember of that trilogy. I'll have to re-watch it to be certain, but this film I love a lot. I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I do, and yet here we are. That's the big surprise behind it, you could say. But anyways, enough of this review has been sent in. Um, I'm going to be giving it a 9 out of 10. Literally, the only flaws I have with it is that some characters are sidelined, such as Penny Parker and Kingpin, whilst being an intimidating uh, and threatening villain with a lot of motivation. It does have a lot of screen time cuts. We just can't be as compelling or as... Uh, Depthful as our main heroes, mind you, but, but he is far from a weak villain, so this film most certainly has earned that 9 out of 10 rating. I cannot wait to be getting this film on Blu-ray to watch it again. 